All right, it's that time again. Time to talk about the week that was in Media Fails. And we picked, I think, a particularly yes, a uh, good one this week. This is from the New York Times. Uh, still going hard on the, the anti-Russia stuff. So this bombshell expose says, as Bernie Sanders pushed for closer ties, Soviet Union spotted an opportunity. Uh. Previously unseen documents from a Soviet archive show how hard Mr. Sanders <laughs> worked to find a sister city in Russia. Yeah. <laughs> Let me lay this out. So I, I, you know, do not probably approach this with the same charity. I'm like, okay, you know what? Like, I've always been skeptical of people in the 70s and the 80s who were, like, playing around with the Soviet Union because I was like, they were obviously our enemies. So I opened this article with a clear-eyed mind of being like, oh, you know, Bernie was playing with commies whenever it wasn't cool. Yeah, even I had to be like, this is complete BS. <laughs> because it was in, like, 1987, a sister city program, which dozens of American cities had set up under President Reagan. That Ronald Reagan a, was pushing. Right, as a perestroika initiative in order to improve relations between the Soviet Union. Oh, weird. Turns out that the Soviets, in secret documents, were saying not about Sanders necessarily, but about the sister city program that it is a very effective effort in order to push Soviet propaganda. Which, okay, you know. No, probably true. But again, this was done clear eyed from the Reagan administration specifically in order to open up barriers between the United States and the Soviet Union. And avert nuclear and war. And avert nuclear war. And <laughs> this seems and like a pretty good goal. Mayor Sanders of the time did what <laughs> dozens of other American mayors. Again, I went into this being like, why is he playing footsie with commies? And then being like, this is the biggest load of. I've ever I know, seen. And I love the so, way, like, the subhead that's, like, previously unseen documents yeah, from a Soviet yeah. archive that, like, build it up like it's some big bombshell. Oh, we're going to learn the truth about Bernie Sanders. And then it's like, no, he just actually so wanted a sister stupid. city. I, yeah. And it's just amazing. Welcome to our world, by the way. Yeah. This is what it was like every time they're like, Trump went to Deutsche Bank and took out a loan of $200,000. And you're like, he's worth, like, a billion. That's not that much money. I mean, and in, then, the, <laughs> in the retrospective yeah. of, like, next we're going to get, remember how Jonathan and Chait did that, like, yeah. what if Trump right. was an asset, asset since 1987, 1987 or whatever? Yes. Now we're getting that retrospective on Bernie right. Sanders. Of course, we had the, the leak from the, you know, the intel community that he was also a Kremlin agent yes. right before the Nevada caucuses. We saw how that worked out for them. Now we're getting the retrospective on him, too, all building up to an, an eventual also, Chait piece about how he's really a Russian agent. This is phase. really a story of framing, and with the media, it's what we talk about so all the true. Time. It's not just about how they present facts, but what, I mean, you could have actually told a very interesting story about Sanders' efforts to set up a sister city between Burlington and yeah. Uroslav or whatever this uh, the city is called. And honestly, we could have read that. It could have been half critical. It could have been half interesting. There could have been a decent profile. But the, to choose this, it's like the Soviet Union spotted opportunity. That's true. They did. But like the idea that, A, he knew about it, it wasn't even higher government office. Again, it's just such ridiculous framing, specifically in order to convey a narrative that, a he, was, scare narrative. that he was friendly with the, Soviet, with the Soviet Union. And, like, yeah, I mean, I think there is some truth to that in terms of the honeymoon stuff, which I think is weird. But, I mean, generally, like, in this specific instance, it was just a very, very dumb Way it's also it's that. about the framing. Yeah. It's also about what you choose to spend your journalistic, exactly, your finite right. journalistic resources it's like, on. How much money do they pay this guy, this freelancer, to gallivant around Russia in order to get these documents and then write this whole thing and then blow it up in the New York Times? It's yeah, like, come on. And meanwhile, you yeah. know, Joe Biden is now the front runner in the media's eye, the like presumed nominee, yeah. and he still doesn't get you know no. hardly any scrutiny. I mean, the man was running around lying about getting arrested, yeah, trying Nelson to see Mandela, Nelson Mandela. Which they did write about, to be fair. They but wrote you know about, what? yeah. If they're going to send a guy to Russia, send some guy, you know, he's right there. Send him to Ukraine. Let's go to the courthouse documents. Let's look at some Burisma. Yeah, I'm going to hold my breath to see uh, to see whether that comes about with, with Biden. So there you go. Or maybe they can go talk to some neurocognitive specialists. Uh, uh, yeah, they're not so. afraid to do that with Trump, are <laughs> That's they? That's right. See, they set the standard. <laughs> Let's play by the rules. All right. We will have more for you after this. <laughs>